Oh, hi. What's up? It's Auntie Juicer coming from, from uh, Auntie Juicer's apartment. Today, I want to watch somebody that I enjoy watching quite a bit. His name's Coffeezilla. Coffeezilla is a scam bust down, buster, buster downer kind of guy. And uh, he just recently made a video talking about the Safe Moon scam. He caught a YouTuber scamming for $12 million and uh, has a follow up video. It's 39 minutes and 14 seconds long, sort of analyzing the the safe moon scam uh and i find this to be pretty interesting you know i am personally not a fan of cryptocurrency i i am a active stock trader for the most part i stay away from cryptocurrency because of specific problems just as this such as influencers pump and dumping so i have a lot of interest in seeing how this kind of turned out i think this uh this is a pretty interesting story and uh we're just gonna watch it's kind of a long video 13 39 minutes 14 seconds and uh just kind of dive into it, see what's up, see what's popping, and uh, yeah, I suppose that's about it. Let's just dive into it. I uncovered a fraud worth four billion dollars. There's an FBI investigation, lawsuits, and a lot of influencers. I still have, unfortunately, the worst coin that ever existed. This is the story of SafeMoon, a crypto coin that millions of people hold, and some believe is here to change the world. It's more than just talking about a store of value, which wasn't the focus. It's more about building the future and building a safe future and bringing it now. But what if they're wrong? I've been working with a small team to investigate SafeMoon for almost a year now. Does anybody recognize these YouTubers? Who the fuck are they? I don't think I've ever seen either of these guys. I've seen CoffeeZilla work with uh, some ordinary gamers, but never either of these two. And what we've uncovered is shocking. Secret payments. I believe you got to pay off and went away. Deleted evidence. It's a true an FBI operation here redacted everything and hundreds of millions of dollars that appears to have been stolen provably on the blockchain welcome to the 10 million dollar studio I'm your host coffeezilla let's get into it are you sure this is smart I mean this isn't the small fries you used to go after yeah I know this is a billion dollar company I, I know you're accusing some of these people of actual crimes look I know do you do you know there's risks to messing with money like this. This isn't a game anymore. Okay. Clever way of saying, hey, you guys better appreciate my content because I could have some big dicks trying to swing their nut sacks in my mouth. That's what Coffee's doing. He's swinging around his, his Giga Chad penis and saying, look, I'm risking the biscuits so you guys can have a good video, all right? So you better enjoy, <laughs> you better, you better enjoy it. Okay, fine. If you really think it's so irresponsible of me, how about we flip for it? This is a story of greed, bad financial decisions, and somehow Gambian wind farms. The creators of SafeMoon are now being sued and investigated by the FBI. But before we get to that, we have to discuss how did this all start? Who creates? Yeah, copy is gonna go like missing Safe if he keeps Moon. it up. Is it a this is some crazy stuff. mastermind like Soulja Boy or Gary V? No, <laughs> whoa, whoa, it turns out it was what? a crypto mastermind. Like what the fuck Soulja was Boy that? Gary Mr. Monkey, v. what's up? Did you did you know you could did you know you could upload TikTok videos while you're taking a poop? Have you ever thought about getting into content? Everyone always says, uh, you know, I'm working nine to five, but what are you doing between five to nine? <laughs> no. It turns out it was a guy who believes in Q. Yes, that Q. His name is Kyle, and very little is known about him other than he taking distrusts shit, the government apparently. and thinks they're a bunch of criminals. Which, um, I don't know, fair enough, I guess. But Kyle's not going to complain about it like most people. And I think he decided at some point, if you can't beat him, you might as well join him. And he decides getting into crypto is the perfect way to start redistributing some of that wealth back to himself. Agreed, Streaky. And that's when he starts making a bunch of coins. Coins like, give me your money token. Really classy stuff, you know. But for some reason, this really wasn't working out for him until Kyle found something called B token. Now, when Kyle invested in B token, he liked that it had a special property to it, a 5% tax on every transaction, which was then split into two parts. 3% was added back to the liquidity pool. And two why can't people see things are scams? Harry Peter, people can see things are scams. That's the thing, right? That's what's dangerous about this sort of shit. People can see that things are scams, but they choose to get into it anyways because that's how hope-driven some people are. They want the best opportunity they can set themselves up for, even if they know it's a scam because they know that in a scam, you can still make money, you know? They know that 1%, 5%, 10%, whatever percentage it is, of people in a scam token like this, whatever, can still make money. 
People just run on hope, man. And these people take advantage of hope. 2% was distributed to all the holders of B, which just encouraged people not to sell. You just held and made money. And Kyle liked this idea a lot, which is why soon after he Trade copied the, the code and launched it himself. Trade coin's the only shit coin that's not a scam. He raised the tax to 10%, and he changed the name to something a lot more catchy. He called it Safe Moon. And he promised everyone from the beginning, no rug is possible. Join us on our journey safely to the moon. Now, just so you understand, in the world of meme coins, Safe Moon basically translates to easy money, safe money. It's like setting the world's most delicious cheese on the world's most obvious trap, which is why, of course, everyone fell for it. Look, I appreciate your concern, but somebody has to do this. There are literally millions of people who are invested in Safe Moon. And those millions are going to hate you for it. You think anyone who is in Safe Moon is going to be grateful for your story? They're going to be pissed, Coffee, and not at the people who lied to them, but at you for telling them the truth. And the probability of you coming out ahead is. You know what? You know what? You know what this is reminding me of right off the bat? When I told people that you can make money playing puts on a long term investment. <laughs> Unlikely. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you're probably right. But you're gonna do it anyways. Yeah. You humans are so confusing. Safe Moon immediately went viral because of the promise of safe, easy money, and Kyle pretty clearly wasn't ready for it. People who knew him say Kyle kind of didn't think this stupid plan would actually work. Hi, I'm James. Uh, I was a senior moderator for Safe Moon. Kyle told me that he had no idea SafeMoon was going to explode like it did. His expectation was that he would be in and out. That's right. He was expecting to be in and out. And I only can imagine how he probably thought to himself, how can people be falling for this? But clearly they were. And Kyle decided he may need to hire some people at this point to help him out. But when it did take off, he wasn't <laughs> prepared. Nuts, I'll regret it later, I'm sure. Really and he did. Kyle hired a bunch of people almost as unqualified as himself. There's a guy, Thomas Smith, who became the lead developer. Abe Lincoln? Papa? Papa? Abe Lincoln? Papa Abe Lincoln? <laughs> this ain't fucking Thomas. This is fucking Abe Lincoln. It's either that or this guy's Amish, and he's got a YouTube channel, or a Twitter, or whatever the fuck this is. Sam's, what's up, baby? This is Abe Lincoln. He's a grown man who insists everyone call him Papa. I'm your Papa. I'm the uh, lead dev here. Now after Papa, a guy named John Caroni is brought on as the CEO of SafeMoon. And he turns out to be the guy in the group project that sort of everyone ends up hating. Their argument had always been, oh, we brought John on in you know the heat of the moment because we needed to. It was an emergency. We're so He's sorry nice for beard. bringing him in. And he I can the respect project. a good beard. There's also a bunch a of people artist. hired at this time that you're not going to need to know till later. So we're just going to ignore them for now. But uh, here they are on screen. Cracking. This is just all thrown sure. together in the heat of the moment. Call it what you want. The incompetent Avengers. The League of Extraordinarily Stupid Gentlemen. Either way, it kind of worked in their favor up, for bye. the following reason. It is hard to tell when Safe Moon is malicious and when it is stupid. There just is a problem with that, and there's reasons for that, which we can get into later. You see, that's Bootsy, one of the researchers I worked with, and you can tell he's sort of been hit by this smokescreen of stupidity that SafeMoon has created. Like, here's a guy who's been researching SafeMoon for 11 months alongside Strider and myself, and we're all still baffled. People just can't figure out how something this dumb made this much money. So we have a valuation of around three to $4 billion, and we did this all in nine months. So it almost helped them in a way how dumb it was, and people were buying like crazy, ah. because who doesn't want easy, safe money? All right. and somebody in chat, tell me what fucking safe moon even does. What's the utility behind safe moon? I swear to Christ, if anybody right now in chat owns safe moon and doesn't know what the fuck they do, and how they provide value, I'm gonna be pissed. Please, if any of you own Safe Moon and you can't tell me one thing they do that provides intrinsic value, I'm going to be annoyed. <laughs> I don't get it. Three to four billion dollars, I do nothing? <laughs> it's fucking so You know who goofy. actually loves easy safe money more than anyone? 
influencers. There you go. This is all in April right. 2021. That's when Safeman really exploded in popularity. They had billboards across the nation. They had the biggest in the chat for Ninja. Welcome. Thanks for the first time. Chat. Not that it was free of criticism. Unfortunately, this is a giant Ponzi scheme. Those are just the haters that needed to be destroyed by the Safe Moon Army. That, by the way, is the name Safe Mooners gave themselves, and they declared war on the haters. Here's one of many of these Safe Moon soldiers. We are the Safe Moon Army, and I am Safe Moon Soldier. I didn't get this tattoo for no damn reason. Nobody oh, will ever silence me with threats stop. or threaten my money. You know, it's almost stop. embarrassing to watch a grown man defend a token that was designed to rob him of his money. But ah. maybe it's time to talk about just that. How Safe Moon was designed. We're going to talk about how Safe Moon was ah. supposed to be so safe. Because that's really the point of all this, isn't it? Somebody needs to create a, a, a shit coin called Scam Coin. And they're going to say, no, it's not a scam. It's just a joke. And then when they rug pull it, everyone's going to be like, aha, it actually was. Safe moon is the biggest oxymoron of all time. Was not safe. Never went to the moon. <laughs> Money is supposed to be safe. And that idea came from this claim about a locked liquidity pool. But what does that mean? In DeFi, the way you trade tokens is with something called an LP, liquidity pool. Every pool basically has two different currencies, and the point of it is to provide buyers and sellers a way to trade without regular market makers like Wall Street has. In a liquidity pool, the way it works is the ratio of your two assets determines the price. For example, one liquidity pool might hold 5,000. What up, 5, this guy's capping? Guys, we got a safe mooner. <laughs> <laughs> we got a mooner. We got a moon boy. Safe moon and a thousand BNB nice to see you, together. And the price is just the ratio of these assets. So five to one in this case. And I can trade on either side of it. I can sell safe moon by putting safe moon into the pool and getting BNB out at that ratio. Or I can buy safe moon by putting BNB into it. And as people buy and sell, this ratio shifts and the price changes automatically. Coffee explained this pretty well. Essentially, what this liquidity pool is doing is acting as the market maker. You're taking out the middleman of uh, supply and demand. That's a pretty. That, that's the easiest way of putting it. Pretty good explanation. Now, the more liquidity you have, the bigger the pool is, the better because price stabilizes. And I can feel you all collectively yawning at this point, so we're going to move on before we put anyone to sleep. But just know the key innovation of SafeMoon was this idea that every time someone trades, you just take 5% of it as a tax and put it into the liquidity pool and lock that money up so SafeMoon, the company, can't touch it. That way, you know, as an investor, you can always trade SafeMoon for a fair price. This is how you avoid the scam of how tokens commonly get rug pulled, where suddenly the price or liquidity pool of a project would collapse, which happened all the time in DeFi I was with too. cases like this. So the market cap is OG, OG, triple OG, oh, triple trillion OG. Dollars. And now the mark. Oh! Oh! It went to zero! Yeah! <laughs> the whole pitch of safe. That really is iconic, though. That's going to live on in meme history forever. Safe Moon is basically, look, rug pulls like that, that's impossible with Safe Moon because the money's locked up. It's right there in the readme. It's yeah, automatically it rough. locked up. Or wait, was it auto locking? Because I kind of read that too. Oh, that's probably the same thing. Unless it wasn't locked at all. Uh-oh, this is confusing. SafeMoon appears to be contradicting itself. Maybe we should go to the CEO. Wait, what confusing. the fuck did that say? SafeMoon appears to... Auto magically. Is that even a fucking word? Auto magically? Auto magically? Auto locking, not locked. Why? Auto magically. <laughs> to be contradicting itself. Maybe we should go to the CEO of SafeMoon so he can explain it once and for all. So the LP lock is automated, not automatic. Automated and automatic are not the same thing. Hmm. That didn't help. Well, maybe maybe we go to the source code that they copied from B token and figure out what's really going on here. Surely B token wasn't a rug pull. So they we have seems like it made the right B call. token code and B was kind of a smaller rug pull. Oh, 
Well, that's that's even worse. How are we getting out of this one, fellas? Our big difference, you're going to find that we're never going to rug. Uh-oh, I think we're looking at a pink... Said every shitcoin ever. ...pinky promise protocol here, fellas. But if B token could rug pull, that means the funds in SafeMoon are also not locked up and are also not really safe. So that was kind of a huge lie. But surely this guy has the best of intentions and oh, seven won't have any skeletons jazz. come out of his closet later and incriminate him. I said, knowing that I'm about to play a clip. Let's not pretend why we're here. Well, this ideal, uh, ideological, like, let's let, let's save the rockets thing. This is about money. Oh, we're in a bit of trouble here, aren't we? Look, guys, I'm not against money, right? I'm I'm American, so I, so I like money as much as the next guy, as long as the next guy isn't Jake Paul. But, <laughs> but this just doesn't seem like a good deal at this the point, bitterness. especially when the founder created a token called Give Me Your Money. But I get it. Look, that's just my opinion, right? We need evidence now. And so that's when I started looking at the blockchain. I started collecting all of SafeMoon's wallets and identifying them. And when I did, I found that Kyle had already been rug pulling SafeMoon since it started, just more slowly than the B token guys. See, on March 5th, this shows up on the blockchain as the function remove liquidity, which of course they said was impossible. And the first time they took from the cookie jar, it wasn't for much, only $14,000 oh. was- The fuck, 36, how many? 100,000 million billion, 36 trillion? What's the supply on SafeMoon? Like a fucking hentillion? Octillion? Jesus Christ. But it added up over time, and I worked with a blockchain researcher to find out just how much Kyle took. The total amount of SafeMoon that came into Kyle's wallet was over 164 trillion tokens. Fast forward to mid-September to mid-December, this grossed him just under 10.3 million. Wow, that's a lot of money for a token that was never gonna rug pull. And maybe that's why the FUD just seemed like it wasn't stopping. SafeMoon may have been booming from influencers, but they were suffering from a major PR problem known as evidence. And this is when a Twitter account <laughs> called War on Rugs first appeared, who started warning people that, quote, the likelihood of losing all funds was absolute with SafeMoon. Now, this was a pretty epic ownage of facts and logic from uh, War on Rugs here, and it seemed like SafeMoon was on the ropes right up until Warren Ruggs decided to scam people himself with his own rug pull, uh, to which, yeah, the only response is- As long as it's is, not a crypto, man. Like, how? I got you, T, bro. The guy calling out scams decided to scam people himself, which, as you guys know, um, I would never do to you, pump the stock, Zilla. And basically, <laughs> SafeMoon was like, aha, Glad well, you. that guy's a scammer, so are we cool now, everyone? And everyone was kind of like, I, I guess we'll forget about it all. He both- seemed to have pointed something out pretty important about Safe Moon, but then he also turned out to be a real piece of shit. And after War on Rugs, the Safe Moon army just really kind of rallied against anti-scammers, and they made it their mission to expose the exposers. Hey, T-Bro, if you're not reaching out to me for a pyramid scheme coin, I don't want it, all right? If this, if this project's not called Give me your money and I will steal it from you like a fucking baby. I, 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 if it's not, if that's not the title, I don't want to, I don't want to be a part of it, all right? With people like this. This channel will be dedicated to exposing opportunists and shillers of FUD. FUD, for those that are new to the term, stands for fear, uncertainty, and doubt. My mission is to analyze and expose those that use FUD to manipulate you for their own personal gain. Now I know what you're thinking. With Rambo over here going SEAL Team 6 and all the haters, SafeMoon must be doing pretty well. The and fuck? it's true, they decided <laughs> it was a good time to clear Is up all the real? FUD once and for all with a smart contract audit. Today, the SafeMoon audit just dropped on our heads. So that happened, except the auditors were like, yeah, your code kind of sucks, and there are major vulnerabilities. My favorite quote is that they said, mishandling it can have devastating consequences to the project. To which SafeMoon was like, oh, well, you don't have to worry about that because if, if we took your money, we'd get sued and go to jail. Now, of course, within a year of that, they would be sued and investigated by the FBI, but we're getting ahead of ourselves. SafeMoon, even for all its hype, just really Hot still Cheetos. had problems Easy, Dan, internally. Like people are leaving the company. Everything is kind of a mess. And maybe that's why at some point the ownership of Safe Dilly, you don't like Coffee's head? He's got a nice head. Why would you not like Coffee's head? He's, he's, his head is very round. 
Ah, uh, it's got nice circular shape. It's got a nice beard. Moon was oh, transferred over. That was about to say. Papa. I smoke. Just you. so you guys understand, the safe oh, community. Oh, yeah, 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 Here's an example. This guy says, Papa's literally a genius. XRP offered him two million to work with them and he denied it. Any blockchain project would die to have Papa on their team. And Papa says like, truth. Now later, the XRP team would reply that they had no idea who Papa was and had never heard of them. But the point is, the SafeMoon people thought Papa was the reincarnation of Satoshi Nakamoto and that he was gonna usher SafeMoon into a golden age of prosperity. Abraham Lincoln. And now did that happen? No, in reality, Papa just stole more money, uh, like Kyle did, except he was a bit craftier about it, I guess. Like when Kyle stole money, he just kind of took from the liquidity pool. But Papa was different. He had a story about it. He justified himself by saying Hennessy? he Not wasn't rug guy. pulling liquidity. He was moving the funds in a fund migration from a version one liquidity pool to a version two. And as they told it, it was for the people's benefit. In fact, every time Papa migrated these funds, he would send the same memes every time. Boom. But behind all the boomer memes, not all the money made its way over. And you might not be surprised to find out that some of it found its way into Papa's pockets. What? We first find a hint of this on May 12th when he says, I migrated the LP in a way I figured everyone would love. But here's what actually happened. Really? I'm gonna visualize what Papa should have done versus what he actually did. What was supposed to happen in a migration is that he would move the BNB Safe Moon pair from V1 to V2. Simple, right? Instead, Papa did something different. He took the BNB pair from V1, but kept title of the video: I uncovered a billion dollar fraud. The Copy Safe Moon, and he only put the BNB into the V2 pool with a purchase of Safe Moon, meaning. Papa got more safe moon from the V2 contract as well. Now on the surface, this appeared to cause the price to spike because a huge purchase order was just made. But in reality, Papa was keeping gigantic amounts of safe moon that he could later sell for a personal profit. And the value of safe moon overall was falling. Once again, me and some researchers calculated how play, much uh, in Elden dollars tonight, Papa a. took. And here's what we found. So Thomas withdrew liquidity 18 different times. He actually held on to $143 million worth of liquidity. The sum of outgoing SafeMoon transactions was about $100 million. Of that $100 million, $58.9 million went to BitMart and $8.1 million went to other undisclosed wallets. I feel like I need to remind everyone, this is the same guy who also said this. Our big difference, you're gonna find that we're never gonna rug. So I guess turns out that was a big lie um, and the money wasn't safe after all. But as with all things safe, every day is opposite day. Every day. When he said well, the big difference is you, you will never rug, he meant to say the, the big similarity is that we will rug. <laughs> things Sam, are about up, to bro? get much worse. You have to understand, Safe Moon at this point was under a lot of stress, and the team was kind of fracturing internally. Caroni in particular was the most hated on the team. People didn't like how he wanted to run things. And here's one of SafeMoon's own developers, Hank That's Wyatt, blaming him for a lot stands. of SafeMoon's problems. That was an organized thud attack. That was only a small, small amount of why the red candles were happening. John wouldn't let us lock up a quarter of a billion dollars in liquidity. That's why all the thud was happening. And when we asked him, hey, we don't need this money. We shouldn't touch it. And he said, oh, no, no, but we can still do some of it. And he wanted to run for some of the LP. Yeah, it can lick my whole balls. <laughs> now I know what you're thinking. I probably could have cut that. Bitter! That last part of the call, and you still would have gotten the gist. It can lick my whole balls. But Play it twice. No, I really Play it three think times. you have to hear these people describe John Caroni in its full glory to understand just how so hated sorry. this guy was. 300, you want to know why I'm sorry? Chat, tell him. There's like no substance of a human there anymore. He's just a fucking dick. He's just a dick. John's a fucking monster and does not care about his employees whatsoever. I, this is gonna sound really fucked up and I apologize in advance. The only time I like John is when he's depressed. 
See, now you get the picture. <laughs> Basically, no one... <laughs> the only time that I like John is when he's sitting in his room and he's thinking to himself, the rain sounds real terrible this day. Every time I take a shit, it won't go down the toilet. I try to pet my cat and he bites my hand and I feed him. It's just a shit day. And that's when I like John. <laughs> liked Coroni and this rift only escalated with Operation Phoenix. First signs of this was when John started talking about Project Phoenix, which he then changed to Project Phoenix because he spelled it wrong and refused to admit that he just made a spelling error and I have no idea why, uh, but it will haunt me to the end of my life because he literally could have just switched it and instead he is running with it to this day. We're fast approaching our full unveil of Operation Phoenix. But he starts talking about Project Phoenix Who does this guy look like? Ah, is his hair beard combo? What? It's, it's reminding me of something. Ah, let me jog my brain for a second. Ah. Ah. Oh, I remembered. A cuck. <laughs> the rest of the team joke. doesn't talk about it at all, <laughs> which didn't seem like much of the time. Uh, until later on when we get the leaked audio. Can you explain what the F Operation Phoenix is? Nobody can explain what Operation Phoenix is, including John. Operation Phoenix is, is a little bit of a journey, but it's mainly a bunch of different complex things a coming together is uh, to scam. create an evolution. He uh, has a lot of claims of what it can be scam. or what it could be. It started out as uh, banking the unbanked in Africa, the most overused phrase by anyone who has a lot of money in the crypto space. Talked about how it was going to be utilized as a currency in the Gambia. Then it became about windmills. All right, but real talk, I don't think people want cryptocurrency to become an actual currency. Let me tell you why. When something becomes a currency and you can spend it on things, guess what that means? It means you have to sell it to spend it. You know what that does to the actual price? makes it go down. Well, what happens when the price goes down and you sell your safe moon? What do you think the majority of people, especially the people holding the stock right now are doing? They're buying and holding. They're fucking to the mooners. And when they sell it, do you think the next guy is going to feel so inclined to hold it, hold it down 80%? Probably not. Probably not. You don't want that, believe it or not. Trust me. Trust me, bro. That's my source. Trust me. Uh, and clean energy, then it became about burning tokens with those windmills. Somehow, Mom, uh, the phrase is, Don't buy every crypto. turn a burn became a thing for a while. Nanotechnology was used at one point, according to them. I can't go any farther than that. Truly, I'll just keep rambling about it. It's a gobbledygook. It makes no sense. So to summarize, John is off doing whatever Estosis, Project Phoenix is, and he wants to use the Safe Moon War Chest to fund it. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the core team kind of hates John, they resent him, but they can't kick him out because he's the CEO. So instead they decide to start a new project. They call it Piggy Bank Token. Uh, so the idea of Piggy appeared to just be uh, their next attempt to do whatever it is the team wanted to do without John. Uh, that was another example of the rift that seemed to have been created. Now, hey, Piggy thanks, would turn Peter. out to be a big failure in the months ahead, but the anti coroni team decided they weren't going to leave Safe Moon quietly. Many of them wanted their cut of the pie. Hank Wyatt, for instance, wanted a $3 million severance package. His best interest is to give me my $3 million severance package. His big plan was to use his ownership over Safe Moon's various social Blumpkins, platforms as what leverage. What is that? I'm kind of forcing his hand on that one because I also own the Twitter. But this bad attempt at blackmail sort of backfired on Hank when this audio call leaked and Hank was basically just kicked out immediately. The whole team would eventually be replaced as well as Caroni realized what had happened with Piggy. But I started oh. to wonder, was uh, it just pass. Hank looking for a payout? Do you think Thomas, Kyle, these guys basically got paid off to not become like permanent enemies of Safe Moon? I believe that Kyle, we had a discussion, they were in legal discussions with their lawyers about suing Safe Moon to regain control. But Thomas said that he'll honor whatever Kyle agrees to. One of the things that they were going to ask for was to be paid to go away, essentially. I'll sue you for all this fraud and all these things, and you will very possibly have criminal charges, and then he gets a payoff. I believe he got a payoff and went away because it just disappeared. 
they never said a word to us about what, what happened. Well, those are quite the allegations, but in order to understand whether they're credible, we need to start talking about John Caroni. All right, so hey, I'm John. I'm the CEO of SafeMoon. We already know most people didn't like him, but we're going to take our own look at him and decide for ourselves. Caroni's past is mostly military. He worked for the Department of Defense, and his parents are both former CIA. And it's clear from the beginning that he wanted to run a much different safe moon. Guys, I know what you're thinking. This guy was in the Army. I'm in the Army. This guy scammed people. But Trey Coin's not a scam, okay? Scam Coin's not a scam. Trust me. It's not a scam. Don't even think it. Don't think it for a second, all right? Trade coin, scam coin is the most legit shit coin on the market. It will go to the moon. And then after the moon, it'll go to Pluto. And then after Pluto, it's going to go to Uranus. And it's going to finger that fucking butthole like you've never been fingered in the ass before. They're going to make trillions. Don't make that connection, all right? Then the other guys. He saw himself as something of a <laughs> tech visionary, and he saw SafeMoon as the vehicle for that. He said SafeMoon was a technology company. We're a nine-month-old blockchain innovation company, a tech company. They were going to build products like a crypto wallet and, yes, Gambian wind farms. And it wasn't until September 2nd that Caroni would truly get his chance to fulfill this vision. He was already CEO, but a lot of people were struggling with him for power and for influence. And but after the legit. piggy bank token disaster, Caroni really got the chance to clean house. And he was about to get his chance in the driver's seat. Now, when most people talk about visionaries, you think of Elon Musk or Steve Jobs. But everyone forgets that 99% of visionaries are just all talk. First they think you're crazy, then they fight you. and. And then they think that you're actually Mark Zuckerberg. Everybody from the valley talks like a lizard. And then all of a sudden you change the world. And Caroni basically fits this second model. He talks a big game, but he kind of lacks the track record. Let's start with the Gambian wind farms. Remember that this is that Project Phoenix thing we heard so much about. Welcome, Safe Moon Army. Thousand percent, Frank. Thousand percent. Apps in the chat. Welcome to the, Let's welcome start to with the channel, man. It's great We've to have you. We've given you a lot of teasers regarding the wind turbines, but here are the details. The use of wind power has proven viable. And just as small plane wings have evolved over the years, so can the physical designs of turbines. Now, wait a second. I know what you're thinking. That wind turbine, it looks pretty good, actually. And that's because it's someone else's wind turbine. A company <laughs> called Symptiv made it. Here's the actual CEO. This is Namely, and a small scale wind turbine to generate simple, affordable, and reliable wind energy. Now, I don't know about you, but the fact that SafeMoon didn't build the technology in their tech demo seems like a bit of an issue. But here at SafeMoon, an issue is just an excuse to innovate. So what was that innovation? Well, if you can get past PhD level word salad, basically they put little dots on the windmill and claim to make it more efficient, which uh, uh, gonna need to see some evidence for that one, fellas. And SafeMoon's other technologies aren't much better. SafeMoon launched their own crypto wallet, which was supposed to replace the popular Trust Wallet app. The only issue is, seems to be a one-to-one -one, uh, copy of the Trust Wallet. But now it has the SafeMoon logo on it and has the SafeMoon colors. And all of this is right in line with SafeMoon's business practices from the very beginning, when they took B Token, renamed it, and called it a big innovation. Or, sorry, uh, they called it an evolution. SafeMoon is the evolution. SafeMoon is the evolution. Create an evolution. And you have to be willing to evolve. But now that we've talked about SafeMoon's contributions to technology, we need to talk about the one thing they did that does seem original, and that's the V2 contract of SafeMoon. See, SafeMoon was still getting flack for being the clone of a rug pull, so I, they I decided agree, they were gonna upgrade it. Now, mind you, this is different from like the V2 liquidity pool we talked about Papa migrating to. This is an actual upgrade of the token itself. Unsurprisingly, this upgrade would turn out to be a total disaster. The big differences for version two were really the changed fees. Instead of a 10% tax split two ways, there were now four different uses of the fees as well as a switch to a proxy contract. But the big question became, how do you get everyone to switch over to this V2? Yeah, token? poor dude, They didn't bro. want to split their community, so they decided to force people to switch using a 100% tax. What could go wrong? The big one. My name's Danny, Danny Trump. You might know me, okay? I was once president of the United States. I thought about running for president once again, and quite frankly, 
I think I could do bigger and better things. And that is why I have created Danny Coin. Okay, Danny Coin is most certainly not a scam. Unlike every other coin on the market, all the big, nasty, nasty Fox News analysts, this coin cannot be rug pulled. Quite frankly, it would never happen. I know great people, great people in the, in the rug pull community who would never rug pull with Danny Coin. Okay, trust me. This is a safe investment. Believe it. One is regarding the 100% tax. Yeah. So basically, we had to, we were shutting down V1. So yes, they raised their tax of Safe Moon from 10% to 100% in an attempt to make the V1 token useless and force everyone to migrate their tokens over to V2 where it's actually usable. I can't wait the to grow up either, Mom. The problem, of course, is that a lot of people who invest in SafeMoon aren't tech savvy. And when you send money on SafeMoon with this 100% tax, which you can do, you get completely wiped out. Essentially, if you tried to do anything but migrate your tokens to V2, you would lose all of your tokens. Where to go? Hey, Newsflash, Safe Moon, and anybody else out there, it shouldn't be that complicated. Now, it turns out you can actually calculate how much people lost in this Safe Moon V1 100% tax thing. And here's what we found 100% tax? So the 100% tax was implemented on December 29th. What? After some that's not tax, that's just stealing. They put tax in front of it as if they'd fucking made it anything other than theft. <laughs> Can you imagine the government comes up to you and says, hey, yeah, you know, you're, you're fucking 30,000 or 50,000 or $100,000 you made this year. Sorry, bitch, that 100% tax, that's my money now, you cocksucker. Thanks for working. Thanks for working 40 hours a week the whole year, pussy. No, that's stealing. That's theft. What are you fucking talking about, tax? 100% tax? Coming up the incoming safe money in BNB and its historical value, the total loss has added up to $102 million. Wow, $100 million. And that money, it didn't go nowhere. These lost tokens, they went to the liquidity pool. And we know who controls that, John Caroni. Now it's worth saying that some in SafeMoon said that they were going to pay people back for these losses. This guy, uh, the FUD Hound, who you saw earlier, real name Ryan, he said that they were gonna refund people affected by V1 taxes. Two weeks later, Ryan would resign or get fired, depending on who you believed. Ryan said he felt forced to follow his code of ethics. Caroni said he was fired for breaching confidentiality. Maybe he just said a little too much. But I'm sure losing one of your community figureheads isn't that ominous. I'm sure everything's fine, guys, right? Honestly, this is where SafeMoon really goes from like kind of a disaster to full on everything's falling apart. So it's going to feel like we're jumping around at times and I apologize for that. In fact, I actually forgot to mention, we kind of skipped by the fact that at this point, the FBI had actually started investigating SafeMoon. So, you know, there's that. Hank was visited by the FBI at one point. Asked about all of us. Yeah. I guess it says something when an yes! FBI investigation is a side item. Yeah. That you're like, oh yeah, did I mention that? Uh, and not only that, things got worse, of course, because calls leaked of former Safe Moon the members chat for the boys. talking about deleting evidence in case of an FBI investigation. You also got to be careful because if they believe that you deleted out of intent to you know, hide evidence. Yeah. They if you're deleting it before being subpoenaed, you're not deleting any evidence of anything. You're just deleting your messages. It's a true FBI operation here. Redacted everything. The strategy seemed to be, you know, delete evidence before they tell us not to delete evidence, which we'll see how that works out for them. Although we may not have to wait that long. Coffee has pissed off a lot of people, all right? That piece of the call is going to bite some people in the ass so hard. And I know that whenever the time comes that these guys go to jail, they're going to look back at that clip. They're going to look back at that conversation and think to themselves, who is the fucking dipshit who recorded this? <laughs> that allowed Coffee to have that footage. Huh? They're going to think that. They're going to think that. That clip is going to be some... Da that's going to be bad shit, dude. Because soon after this, a class action lawsuit was filed against SafeMoon. The creators of SafeMoon and all the influencers who promoted it were all accused of 
pumping and dumping the coin. And frankly, when you look at the 97 pages of evidence, it does seem pretty overwhelming. Like I said, at this point, things were just falling apart. And while Crony would usually use this time to pivot to some new harebrained scheme he had cooked up, his interviews started to go a little differently. There were a group of people who accused Safe Moon of false and misleading statements. Damn, man, I got you. Uh, must say, boy, I got you, monkey, I got you. Currency. Damn, you guys think Are my email is just porn. Are you talking to community? Are you just You're not hoping wrong. they all go away? Yikes, that's probably not how he thought that was going to go. Now, Caroni gives the stock response, of course. Again, we won't comment on an ongoing case, but uh, Safe Moon will continue mission, will continue moving forward. But you have to wonder what their play is here. Safe Moon is down 90%, and almost everyone has abandoned I anything ship. Here, Peter. I still have, unfortunately, <clears throat> the worst coin that ever existed, Safe Moon. I came on this show, I yeah. bought $40,000 of it, and I now have 2,000 left, so. And at this point, John Caroni is really sort of the last one standing. He's the last one left, and I'm sure the most relevant question many people have at this point is like this. Okay, look. Fucking Dave Portnoy took money, just has bad luck, man. Papa Dave Portnoy bought and sold the fucking stocks at peaks and then lows. He bought Safe Moon at a peak, and then he's fucking holding it at a low. He just can't win. This dude is just, he's not even a paper hands Portnoy anymore. He's just bitch Portnoy, dude. The dude can't make, he can't make any money. He can't, he can't make it happen. Took money, fine. The V2 robbed people of millions of dollars. Okay, maybe they'll one day pay that back. Caroni sucks as a boss, fine. They're getting sued, okay. Actually, none of this is okay. But the question is, is Caroni actively profiting from SafeMoon the way Kyle and Papa did? Is he misappropriating the LP? As I'm writing this, this is still the sentiment in SafeMoon's Discord. These people still believe the great John Caroni would never do anything sketchy. Quote, I can't imagine him doing anything unethical with the pool of money. So now we're going to shift gears and take a look at that. Is Caroni the hero who kicked out all the bad apples? Is he an out-of-touch visionary who bites off more than he can chew? Or is he something else? As I started my investigation, the first thing I realized with Caroni is that he behaves differently than Kyle and Papa. He doesn't move liquidity around as much, but it's clear he's yeah, getting the money him. from somewhere. After all, he claims SafeMoon had 90 employees. So where did the money come from to pay for all these people? Naturally, I asked around. They're paid to be on Bitmart. All right, according to Ginger, Bitmart is the source of new funds, allegedly. Bitmart, by the way, is an exchange like Coinbase, and they were one of the first to list SafeMoon on their exchange. But the answer you just heard, that SafeMoon is being paid to list on Bitmart, didn't sound right to me. So I asked Bitmart via email, and they replied, that they weren't paying SafeMoon. <laughs> it was the other way around. Quote, SafeMoon paid Bitmart to be listed. So then the question is, how is SafeMoon making millions from Bitmart? Because what? we know they are. Recently, an employee came forward anonymously <clears throat> and told me that after SafeMoon signed the Bitmart deal, quote, John said to us that he was going to put us all in a new tax bracket. Although this person says they never saw any of that money. So again, the question is not if SafeMoon was making tons of money, but how they were doing it since they weren't being Sean, paid to be listed. Sean, you can always bank on me, all right? I can't pull off something as elaborate as SafeMoon, but you can bet your ass that I'll pull off. I'll pull off. <laughs> I'll make a shit coin that'll make SafeMoon look like a piece of, of, of gold. All right, SafeMoon's going to look like the act. It's going to look like Saturn. The rings floating around Saturn will just be gold bars in comparison to the turd in the toilet bowl that won't flush. That's going to be my shit coin, all right? Not trade coin will dominate the shit coin space. It won't even be close. I had to dig in deeper. So I started to look at the way things worked on Bitmart because it was a little bit different. See, Bitmart artificially implemented tokenomics the way SafeMoon always had with a 10% tax. However, the way Bitmart did it was slightly different. Normally, 5% of each transaction would go directly to the liquidity pool, but BitMart did it slightly differently. Quote, 5% will be returned to the developers to be added back to the liquidity pool. Better than it was added back to the liquidity so pool. So instead of sending the fees directly to the LP, they sent it to SafeMoon's developers to do it. But go with me here. What if the money never made it there? What if BitMart sent those fees to SafeMoon to put in the LP and they just kept it? 
That would be pretty damning, wouldn't it? But the question is, how do we find out for sure if this theory is correct? And this is when I realized I needed Caroni's wallets to figure out if he was getting large payments from BitMart and what he was doing with them. Because bear in mind, Crony was not a rich man before SafeMoon. So if he's getting millions of dollars from BitMart, we know why. The problem is, Caroni was the most clever of all of these guys at hiding his wallets. Caroni is like a ghost. I didn't have anything on him. So to figure this out, I knew I'd have to dig deeper than I ever had before. I started by trying to talk to people who had worked for SafeMoon. I knew one of them would have seen Caroni's wallets, right? Like, or have been paid by it. And I just kind of had to convince them to tell me what it was. Now, obviously, most of the people I talked to said, well, I can't talk. Maybe they felt threatened or they felt like they were under NDA or they just didn't want to be part of a piece. Fair enough. But eventually, I found the right person. He said, quote, there's a lot of information surrounding SafeMoon. Yes, I do have an NDA regarding internal things, but a lot of things I've witnessed aren't covered under that. Now, this person asked to remain anonymous for obvious reasons because they felt threatened before by some of the members of SafeMoon and they wished to not repeat that chapter of their lives. But when I got on the phone with this person, they were a goldmine. They had direct links to- Uh, Bowler says, all the YouTube bots told me to buy SafeMoon. Bro, those weren't bots, that was me. <laughs> Several of the team members- I kid. And provided two really important wallets in particular. The most notable were a Kyle wallet, who's the creator of SafeMoon, and John Caroni's secret wallet that they had both been hiding. And they tell us a lot. We're gonna start with John Caroni's alleged wallet, which is this. The first thing we find is that he was receiving massive payments of Tether, totaling up to $15 million. And where did these payments come from? From Bitmark. He also had 4 million in SafeMoon. And this would all seem to confirm the theory that the fees from Bitmart that were supposed to go to the LP may have been used by Caroni. After all, he said the Bitmart deal would put them in a new tax bracket. But in addition to that, I also saw something else, which is millions of dollars flowing from Caroni's wallet to a familiar address. Not the liquidity pool, but Kyle, the creator of SafeMoon, the one we had been told has been paid off by Caroni. And this all corroborates the information that the ginger gave me earlier. I believe he got a payoff and went away because it just disappeared. He never said a word to us about what, what happened. Wild. Not that this case is fully settled. We still have many questions. Like what exactly Fs. was this $3 million payment to Kyle for? Fs in the chat for Kyle, man. That's so... <laughs> it's so sad. It's so sad. I feel so bad for Kyle. Where did the rest of the money from BitMart go. I reached out to John Caroni about this, regarding this investigation for over a month, to see if he had any way of explaining these problems. He declined to comment. In my opinion, it may just be that there is no good explanation for this, and Caroni just wants to stay quiet. But the question is, where does that leave us? The story of SafeMoon may not be over, but the winners and losers are basically decided. The winners are Kyle, Papa, and Caroni who all made millions of dollars off this thing. Not to mention the several SafeMoon insiders who we didn't even have time to talk about today. They also got a cut. And the influencers, they also got a cut. Basically everyone except for the real believers in SafeMoon won. The real losers were the people who held on to hope. Held on to the belief that maybe if they just trusted this, this new fancy crypto thing, they could escape their dead-end job. Maybe... They felt stepped on by the system like Kyle used to feel. Only for them, this time they were just stepped on again, just in a new way, in a new system, created not by governments or laws, but by unregulated financial markets. The only real hope for justice here is that regulators do what they've been failing to do for so long in the crypto space, which is protect consumers from fraud. And ultimately, Hey, good luck with that. The SEC doesn't even have, they've got a coffee donation jar, okay? Good fucking luck. Good fucking luck. I do believe that's what's happened here. Fraud. I think you can get lost in semantics, in the stupidity smokescreen that SafeMoon kicks up. You know, you can get lost talking about the Gambian wind farms, but ultimately the real story hey, don't is worry that SafeMoon said the funds were automatically locked up, your money is safe, and it wasn't. They took the money at the expense of the investors, and that's the story. Nope, it's not enough. Oh, come on, look at all the evidence. I'm telling you, Coffee, evidence does not matter. 
You're exposing things people don't want exposed. Yeah, maybe. Either way, I'm just kind of glad it's all over. Well, now that that's over, let's give the people what they really want. I just got a hot lead on Will Smith. Wait, hold that thought, Maxwell. Wait, I just what? got a text from Papa. He wants to talk. Oh, brother, you can't be serious. You're not really considering this, are you? Of course I am. He could be the final piece to all of this. No, he's not. I'm telling you, they don't want to know. Well, I do, and I'm taking this call. Next but you said it was a text. <clears throat> this feels like fraud. This is fraud. I mean, how, how could it not be? You guys are millionaires. Your investors are down 90%, and you guys are million, millionaires directly from a representation that was false. Do you feel bad for all the safe moon investors have watched this coin that they loved, like, plummet 90%? Yeah, I do. As, as you should, by the way. Did you ever suspect Coroni of fraud? Yes. No, I didn't. I, I never got a payout that big. Never. I'm sure we'll see this on Netflix someday. <laughs> oh, what a line! What a line! Dude! I'm sure we'll see this on Netflix someday. What a way to leave that fucking cliffhanged. Holy shit. Well, let me tell you guys the moral of the story, all right? The moral of the story, this may be controversial, okay? May be controversial, but if it tastes like shit, smells like shit, you put it in your ear and it fucking kind of, it kind of sounds like shit. You, you, you feel it on your skin, it feels like shit. You're looking at it, it kind of looks like shit. Maybe, just, just maybe, maybe it's shit. Might be shit. Can we agree to that? Oh, hi. Oh, I didn't see you there. Well, since you're here, uh, check out...